Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your June outlook, our Climate Watch outlook for the next few weeks ahead. And as we go from autumn to winter, we should be expecting to see a little more change in the weather pattern. And we do see that, but we are still seeing some very powerful high pressure systems yet to come in. As we kick off June 1st this weekend, what you see here in the brighter white and yellow shading is high pressure. So there is a lot of high pressure on the map at the moment. A lot of low pressure down where it should be around Antarctica, some big storms are tracking through. And of course, some of this low pressure to the southeast of New Zealand is the reason why we've just had at the end of May the unsettled weather with the thunderstorms, tornadoes, things like that. Further out to the southwest of Australia, we are seeing more low pressure systems coming in out of the Indian Ocean and um, south towards the Southern Ocean, moving in from the west. Seeing more of those in the mix, that is bringing a little bit of rain relief into the southern parts of Australia. But really, there's a lot of dry weather still to move on through. But we're going to try and break it down for you and make some sense because it is not all dry. Um, and the rainfall is sort of limited in, to some degree, but it could still be heavy. Here's the climate highlights as we sort of take a look back to where we've been. Sea surface temperatures around Australia during April, uh, over half a degree above average, the second warmest on record since 1900. Uh, globally, sea surface temperatures remain well above normal, and that now includes New Zealand. New Zealand was actually pretty normal so far this year, but in the last few weeks, sea surface temperatures are going up. On land, New Zealand warmer in most regions by up to two degrees. That doesn't sound like a lot, but you've got to remember that's every single day, every single night, measuring it all out at the end of it, a couple of degrees above normal. That's all the difference in some areas between getting frosts or none, getting snow or none, that sort of thing. So that is quite a bit. And that's we've had a lot of Australian and subtropical airflows, kind of explains why that's happened. El Nino, not around. We're in neutral, as we would expect, pretty much for the rest of the year, I would say. Uh, it keeps moving out. Now it's October. More than likely, it'll be November next month. See what I mean? And the Indian Ocean Dipole, that is the Indian Ocean's version of La Nina and El Nino, also neutral, might change in the coming months. And the Southern Annular Mode, SAM, down around the Southern Ocean, that is also neutral. So what does that all mean? It means that we've got uh, nothing big happening in the atmosphere or at sea that is reshaping the weather pattern that we've currently got around New Zealand, Australia, and generally the Australasia region. So let's have a look at the air pressure maps for the next few weeks ahead. We kick off June the 1st, a lot of high pressure coming out of Australia and tracking along into the subtropics. What is the difference between recent months? Well, two things. One, the highs are being broken up, which means at the end of these big high pressure zones, there's a low. And the same on the other side, although you can't see it on this map, although a lot of that low pressure southeast of New Zealand um, was ahead of that high before it rolls in on June the 1st. The other thing to notice is that the center of the highs, this one here coming in around sort of Sydney, is further north than they've been in recent months. A lot of them have actually been south of Australia or generally in the New Zealand area. So they're going northwards. That means these storms in the Southern Ocean have got a better chance for going up. Now, before you think, gosh, that's a huge high, we're all getting dry, look what happens next week. This is June the 5th. And I wanted to show you this. I don't normally put an air pressure map like this in the middle of what I was just showing you, an animated one, but it's because that stream of high pressure temporarily breaks at times. I'm only showing you one map each week to kind of show you the big picture. It doesn't mean though that that high is around the whole time. So in between the highs, briefly, we've got a chance of some stormy and unsettled weather in the New Zealand area next week. And it's important to show you that because when we jump to week two, you can't really see it. It's another big area of high pressure. So we are getting some breaks even in these high pressure belts. There's a small low pressure zone here or a trough that could produce a bit of rain as we go in towards the second week. Still getting low pressure between the highs, although that's a pretty weak one by the looks of it. And this one here, that's that low that I just showed you coming in for New Zealand next week, gets kind of squeezed out uh, to the east and maybe squeezed to the northeast next week. And of course, that could still change in the days ahead. The low might be further down or still lingering in New Zealand. You can see more low pressure coming up. So that's pretty close connection there where they might merge those lows. But you do still see a lot of high pressure. And while this one is south of Australia, it balloons back out to the north. And so we go to the third week, the middle of June, and this is actually quite an interesting map because it does explain maybe where we're heading as we go to the end of June because we don't really project more than three weeks out. A lot of high pressure, again, further northwards into the New South Wales area, 
northern Tasman Sea and centered north of the country. That stops tropical weather from coming down our way until the high moves eastwards. It's this end part of the high that's got the better chance of dragging down warmer air flows as it moves through Australia and the New Zealand area. But the other thing this does is with that northern placement, the big storms that you would expect in winter down here south of us, they start to move up and you get that squash zone where low pressure and high pressure bump into each other. The windy westerlies that come through here, I mean if this map is accurate it probably won't be exactly like this in a three week time but you can see gale force winds around Tasmania, windy weather around New Zealand, windy weather in southern parts of Western Australia. So stormy stuff in the south is expanding, high pressure is going northwards, that generally brings in more westerlies but it can also as I say at the end of these highs that's where you get the northerly and northwesterly flows that can lift temperatures up. So a bit of variety perhaps still even a bit of an autumn weather pattern as we go right through the month of June. Let's have a look at soil moisture anomaly maps. Now look, this is where we were in April. This is where we are now. At first glance, they don't look a huge amount different, but you do notice the North Island has had more rain relief going further into the greens and blues, or at least the greens. The blues actually drop back down a little bit, and that's not a bad thing. South Island, not a great deal of change, to be honest, between the two maps. Worth noting, here in Waikato in particular, Niwa's uh, soil moisture maps, they for some reason take three or four days to actually put it together. So this does not include all the big downpours we've just had over the last couple of days towards the end of May. So there'll be even more blue ex uh, uh, expanding around the country. Put it this way, on the farmer complaint meter, uh, how many complaints we get about the weather, very few from the farming and growing community over the past month or so, because it's, it's a good balancing act of, of sunny days, and wet days and that's why those big high pressure zones um, they're good really because they're not they're not creating drought anymore the New Zealand drought index nothing at all around the country that's a relief now the marine heat waves have changed so the sea surface temperatures have gone up partially I think because we've had a lot of high pressure we've had mild winds coming through and if the land temperatures have been a couple of degrees above average and no big real storms to churn the water up it's not really surprising to be seeing warmer than average conditions now the unsettled weather we're getting going into King's birthday weekend for New Zealand might change that a little bit, but you are seeing temperatures one, two, maybe even three degrees above normal. This map makes a little more sense of it, and for those who've been watching for the last few months, most of this was green. So it's just gone a bit warmer. What does that mean for the most part? Well it means if you go for a swim it's warmer than usual, so there's a, that's a positive. Uh, but the downside is when you get those thunderstorms like we've just seen, and this is around Australia as well as New Zealand, they can be more intense, particularly in coastal areas. May not make much difference inland, but coastal areas can see bigger thunderstorms, bigger downpours, a bit more unpredictability. And also all that warm water in our coastlines means that coastal areas at night, even when we get frosty stuff, are likely to be warmer than average. And that can make a difference. Here are the temperatures from the Bureau of Meteorology for the month of June on their scale here, the percentages, it goes up to the higher level, which means their confidence is that Australia will be leaning warmer than average. Doesn't surprise me with those big highs and a lack of southerlies, uh, leaning warmer than average by, you know, a, maybe a degree or two carries on around a big portion of Australia. Perhaps a little bit of more cloud over here helping to reduce that. From a rain point of view, it's going further into the blue and green, which I think a lot of you will like, but the Bureau does caution it may not be the rain relief you need here in the southeast where rainfall could be normal, which is not necessarily a lot for some areas. But good to see a little more of that green and blue showing up into the areas that are the driest. But the more populated parts of Victoria, um, maybe some parts of South Australia and Western Australia in those dry zones, just not getting as much. Big cities like Brisbane and Sydney, Canberra, Melbourne, uh, Hobart and Perth all pretty much have normal rainfall Adelaide, fingers crossed, you get a little bit more. Here is the big picture. So what you see here is a kind of messy forecast showing that the highs and lows are all sort of mixing up together and we're getting good variety in the weather for the most part. But those inland areas, New South Wales, Queensland, not seeing very much wet weather. It's coastal driven uh, in those same places where people are saying, can it please stop? And down in the areas where you need the rain the most, those rainfall figures for 15 days are at the bottom of the scale, so not, not necessarily huge rain. The silver lining though, with the storms in the Southern Ocean getting bigger, you get a higher chance of thunderstorms and really big downpours that can break a map like that. In the New Zealand area and the Tasman, very messy, lots of lows coming through, storms in the Southern Ocean brushing 
and bringing in rain. So that's why you're seeing 300 millimetres for Fiordland, 150 millimetres further up the west coast, and maybe around Taranaki, Eastern Bay of Plenty, driest on the eastern South Island. Here's a closer view of it. So uh, North Canterbury, sorry, excuse me, North Otago, South Canterbury are the areas in central parts where rainfall may only be five to 10 millimetres over the next 15 days, unless you get one of those sort of thundery falls. Around the North Island, a lot more variety. Uh, again, though, parts of South Waikato could be in the drier sort of box, but you could still be getting 20 to 40 millimetres in the next couple of weeks. So it's not all bad news. It's actually quite good for pasture growth and all that sort of stuff. Before I go, uh, an animation showing you what we've just talked about. The next 15 days, it's quite a fast animation, kicking off here on the 30th of May as we had to record a couple of days early, and that's where we got that big windy southwest flow over New Zealand and high pressure keeping much of Australia fairly settled, except for over in the Western Australia side. So let's animate this very quickly, and that's two weeks, all basically in movement here with the timestamp. And you see unsettled weather, but still plenty of high pressure zones coming through out of Australia and maybe not necessarily parking over the top of New Zealand, but moving to the north of New Zealand. And that's why you're seeing a lot of westerly flows coming through for New Zealand and southerlies every now and then. And a similar story for Tasmania as well. So a fair bit of movement, but those high pressure zones, they're still very big. And without a doubt, they are still dominating the weather around Australasia. Well, that is all from me for this month. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great June ahead, and we'll see you again one month from now.